Start game now. Kevin of Loxley is back with an archery game. Something right up his alley in that archery game is Crossbow for the Atari 7800 featuring some very interesting box art. It it looks, it's both bad and great at the same time. I like all the action going on. I like how this Robin Hood looks like a cross between Robin Hood and an aged uh, Captain Kangaroo. And this woman is, I guess, smaller than him. And this guy is really tiny. But you know what? There's a lot of action and I like that. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and take Crossbow for our 7800, pop it into our pro system and find out how this version holds up today. Let's go to the game. Crossbow was published by Atari and carries the copyright year of 1987. It is based on the 1983 light gun arcade game made by Exidy. The 7800 version gives you the option to use a joystick or the Atari XE light gun, which came with the Atari XE computer system, but was not bundled with the 7800 or easily found sold separately. Crossbow is for one player only and only has one standard mode of difficulty. According to the manual, you and your three brave friends are on a journey to retrieve treasure stolen by the evil master. In order to get to him, you must travel through several areas full of enemies and lethal obstacles. The only problem is that your friends are so brave that they walk very slowly throughout these areas exposing themselves to danger and never use any evasive actions to avoid them. And even though they carry weapons, they are just for show as they never use those as well. So now it's up to you and your trusty crossbow to save their bacon. When the game begins, you are shown a map and given a choice between two colors, which represent two different paths. Shooting a color will choose your path, and after every regular level, you will once again return to the map screen to choose between two or three paths. So basically, this game is a choose-your-own-adventure light gun game. Though you can't immediately tell it, every color sends you to a predetermined path depending where you are coming from. So from the beginning of the map, the red path will always send you to the village and the green path will always send you to the desert. You can reach the evil master with as little as four choices, but if you are not paying attention to what colors lead where, it is possible to end up walking in circles, revisiting several areas over and over again. The map shows eight areas, including the desert, village, ice caverns, volcano, jungle, river bridge, outer castle, and the inner castle. If you make it to the inner castle and shoot the glowing part of the statue staff when your character is standing over the trap door, you will be sent to face the evil master. If you defeat him, you restart the game from the beginning to build on your score. You start the game with three friends, but you can pick up extra friends by completing the desert, caverns, volcano, river, and jungle levels. However, you can only gain one friend for each of these levels per game. Revisiting them will not get you extra friends. When you start a level, your friends will slowly make their way from left to right. Each screen will have several targets. Some will dissolve your friends if they touch them, but others are non-lethal but can be shot for extra points, such as the master's eye, which occasionally appears at the top half of the screen. Some levels will also have special targets that must be shot in order for your friends to complete their path. For instance, shooting a rock in the volcano level will cover the flow of lava, and shooting two hanging stalactites in the caverns will fill in gaps in the path below. If at least one friend completes a level, you will get to move on. But if all your friends dissolve, your game is over. There are no continues or extra lives, but technically you never die, just your friends. Using the joystick moves the cursor on screen, but whether you use a gun or controller, holding down the button allows you to fire continuously. Scoring wise, you can get anywhere from 500 to 2500 points per target, except for the master's eye, which gives you 5000 points. You can also get 250,000 points every time you defeat the evil master, who can only be defeated by shooting his eyes when they glow red. Graphically speaking, I think this game looks pretty good. I really like the diversity of the levels and how each of your friends have a distinctive look. I also like how shooting all the street lights out in the village will cause the screen to darken, which I think is a nice touch. And while it's not as good as the arcade, I thought the sounds and limited music were well done and fit the game well. Family friendly wise, there is no blood, but some younger kids might find the evil master a little creepy, especially if you are able to shoot his blood red eyes, causing his head to temporarily turn into a skull. On eBay, both loose and complete copies were going for about $13 to $14, though I did see several currently on sale for less. 
and there was one new copy that sold recently for $16, and as always, those prices include the shipping. So what did I think about Crossbow for the 7800? Actually, I found it to be a very enjoyable game. I played it both with the joystick and the light gun, and neither mode is perfect. On the 7800, light guns are not the most accurate, and using the joystick made it difficult to move from one side to the other quickly, but I was able to get used to both methods. And while the light gun is preferable, the joystick method surprisingly holds up pretty well. I think the challenge is solid, and I like how each screen is full of targets, and even the fact that the game allows you to choose your own path. So where am I going to rank Crossbow? Well, I do like the classics Joust at 9 and Centipede at 10 a little bit more, but I think I'm going to give Crossbow the slight edge over Winter Games at 11, so I'm going to make Crossbow my new number 11 game. Crossbow, even without a light gun, it's still fun to play. If you want to learn more about the Atari 7800, you can check out my podcast, the Atari 7800 Game by Game Podcast. This was covered in more depth with the game Commando in episode 17. If you enjoy retro-related videos, would you please click the like and subscribe buttons? You can now support the show through Patreon as well. Just follow the link in the description below. Thank you guys for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the No Sword Gamer. Take care and watch out for the evil master.